guests from Jamaica and Trinidad. Yeah. Um, we welcome you to one more of the Canix webinar series. This is a very, very important one today uh, because we're going to interact with what I are individuals from what I consider to be life's industry, which is the creative and cultural industry. Um, we really want to just give thanks because we're living in a world right now where there's a so, so much turmoil and over the years we always depend on these creatives and cultural and poet people to literally carry us through these type of times, you know, where it is so difficult, you know, and, you know, this interaction with life and with all the worlds that make up life, the, the, the water world, the sky world, you know, and the plant world, it's very, very important, you know, that we can touch base with these relationships and with the individuals who have actually created these parts and continue to create these parts. So, of course, um, today our, 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 we, we have all the way from, from Trinidad, we have uh, a sister Nikki. She's here. Um, she will definitely share, you know, that Caribbean perspective, which is so important, you know, to this whole process of our togetherness and this relationship that we must build as a cannabis family. You know, of course, um, we have Sister Tanya, <laughs> the real, yes, that um, has really, you know, been, as we all know, you know, I've, I've, I've traveled the globe, you know, has never been afraid to share exactly how she feels. And I think in this conversation of this time, it is very, very important to have ones like, like, like that who, who just speaks really from the input of self and, 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 and how things make them feel so forward to her reasoning and sharing around this journey. And of course, Yard Core, you know, uh, uh, and that's the beauty about all of these um, Canix um, webinar. You know, it's, it's family, it's, it's real people having real conversation about their real interaction. And I think that's a, that's a very, very important part of it. So, of course, family man, Yard Core, you know, everyone know of the great um, selector you know, that seek to carry this whole journey of reggae music and Rastafari to a particular, you know, level and in a particular way where, you know, we can see the creative industry and, uh, has been almost used as a tool of division as well and have taken our children in many, many different angles, you know. And those are just things that we would like to touch on today. Uh, for sure, reggae, Music has been inscripted in the 2003 Intangible Cultural Heritage Convention. And, you know, now the whole work of the Jamaican government is to try to list all of the elements that are under reggae music, you know. For example, the food, the clothing, the colors, you know, the whole setup, the rhythm, everything, you know, so that Jamaica now could try to start to own this product and this process as ours, you know, and, and, and that has been a very important step. But for me, I would like to start off, you know, um, and to, to have this reason about how important though to the creativity do we find ganja, you know, marijuana in Jamaica, whether people interact with it directly or what role do we think this actually play in reggae music and why shouldn't it be inscribed into any convention internationally that ganja has made an impact in, in, in this process. So I would love to start with um, Sister Tanya, you know, um, <laughs> just honoring that we are in Jamaica right now. And yeah, might as well start hard, you know, so <laughs> Sister Tanya. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm not going to start hard because I take two draw and I relax. <laughs> But um, let, me, let me talk about my personal interaction with cannabis. Um, started out kind of rocky because, of course, we're coming from it being an illegal substance, according to the law, uh, which means at first I had to hide. And it's inadvertently made a criminal out of me. I'm not a criminal person. Um, I was made into a criminal uh, by the criminalizing of cannabis. Um, so in the early days when I used to smoke, I smoked around my peers, but I hid it from home. 
And later on, when I had a child of my own, I definitely went further underground with my smoking because I didn't want to promote um, to my or anybody else's child the use, the consumption of something that is on the law books as illegal. So it kind of, it was a conflict in the early days. It really was a big conflict. Trying to be who I am, somebody I don't like um, as a principle, not as a moral. I just don't lie. I don't see the point. But I was forced to lie because I didn't want to give any child the, in, the impression that it was a safe thing for them to do, to go out and smoke when, when I know that other humans' reaction to them would be negative. So I had to hide it. But now that we're, we're starting to have sense, I can tell you that in my process, um, whenever I feel overwhelmed, if I have too much work, if I try to take on a lot, if I bite off more than I can chew, anytime I start to glitch, I take a few draw. I, I, I specialize in an indica. It relax me. It kind of neutralize me and put me right back to zero so I can start again with a fresh brain. This is what it does for me. This is what it has always done for me. Um, so I use it medicinally. I, I've never really... Um, gone for the recreational use of cannabis. Um, it has always been something that I use as medicine. Whether whether my group put it in a um, put on leaves, put on rum from a mother. She never advocates smoking of it, but she always have ganja on rum, and we get that for various ailments. We get a cock full or two cocks full, um, whatever she prescribe, and it usually works. Um, but then as an adult now, my own use, my asthmatic too, um, the, it, no, it never really changed my status as far as the asthma, but for the psychological part of me, for my brain, my meds, my sanity, it work wonders. I can tell you, if I have anxiety, if I have stress, if I feel down it, it's it's so weird because i've heard people say cannabis is a down but when if i feel down and i smoke i i cheer up um it doesn't work as a donor for me uh it, it actually relaxes me and and feeling down is somewhere in the opposite of relaxation i think so it worked any anything that takes me away from being relaxed cannabis cannabis brings me right back and that's how it works for me and that's how it helps me in my my process because to create I need to have full use of my, my brain. I need to have full use of my mental capacity. So um, being able to reset is a very important thing for me so that I can then come back with a blank slate and be able to create. And this is what cannabis is. It's like an eraser. I take away all of the distractions, the clutter, you know, and that's how it works for me. I, I, I can recommend it from my experience for that. Rest of our uh, blessings. All right, so uh, we're, we're going to just give you a preempting on the on the follow up. You know, as it relates to Sister Tanya when they are traveling, you know, and and knowing that all of these things can happen, a tour can just be so frustrating at times and so on. And so what? So we're just going to give you a little time to think about that as we move um straight over into Nikki from Trinidad. There, just. The vibration of it in the whole creative industry, yourself personally, just what you would love to share about your journey, Sister Nikki. You're on mute. You. Um, sorry about that. Um, my journey came out of pain. And um, from young, I, I encountered endometriosis, which is basically um, extreme extremely painful period cramps and also having difficulties to have children and um, I remember touring and, and going to the U.S. where my sister lived and and I mean I'd done many surgeries and stuff and one doctor there uh, recommended that I use marijuana um, so you know coming from a Caribbean island I remember telling him that it wasn't legal at the time in Trinidad to be able and, but I tried it there and it was like, wow, it was God's medication to me because I had tried so many other types of medication that didn't agree with me. You know, my body rejected a lot of the, the, the normal medication. 
and it was the first time I could relax into the pain and it didn't consume me. One of the things I've had to encounter as an entertainer is uh, traveling with these cramps and um, you have a show to put on, I'm a comedian and you know people expect you to laugh but here I am in <clears throat> total pain and excruciating pain and I have to put a smile on my face and go and be able to perform and represent Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. There's a lot of pressure on you and there you are in all this pain. So every time I would travel, I would make sure and, and put that in place. Um, and, and only recently in the last year, Trinidad and Tobago decriminalized it where you can have personal use, et cetera. I was also uh, been married to my husband who's been a Rasta for the last 18 years. So it's been part of my life and him really, you know, explaining and understanding the spirituality behind it. But for me, it has really been a wonder drug. Um, I saw my uncle passed away four years ago with, with um, pancreatic cancer, one of the most painful ones. And I remember hearing about the, the um, oil to put under his tongue. And I saw magic happen, you know, it's a really a magical plant for me because my uncle was not eaten, he didn't eat for like two weeks. And when I finally got it, and you know, it's sad that I have to try and find somebody who knows somebody because it wasn't um, decriminalized yet. And I just put like a little dab under his tongue and he was eaten in 15 minutes. And it's one of those things that has made me so happy. So in Trinidad and Tobago, um, we're not there yet. Um, we it's it's kind of understood among the entertainers, um, et cetera. They use that even people from Jamaica, et cetera, who have come into Trinidad and Tobago. It's always been associated, make sure they're okay, get the best for them, et cetera. Um, but from just um how it has opened up a little, you know, it's it's good to see we're going in the right direction, but Trinidad and Tobago, you know, we're so far from where we should be and the medicinal side of it. I mean, I, I should be able to walk in a doctor's office and, and get a, a prescription for medicinal marijuana, but that is still a struggle. So I think we have a long way to go, but hopefully through entertainers like ourselves, we could talk more about it and hopefully open the eyes to the Caribbean leaders who make these decisions, etc. It's amazing, you know, to underscore um, you know, coming from what you're saying, um, um, Sister Nikki, concerning just the fact that we're not, everyone would normally think about it as something that, that gives, you know, that kind of higher level of meditation and so on. But you're just talking about physical relief as an entertainer. And I think that is, that is, that is completely amazing, you know? One, yeah. So we're going to just jump a little bit more to how do you, think um um sister nikki where you know this conversation now in from an entertainer perspective carrying this to the actual government what does that look like and why you know so we, we just want you to just think about and and then we'll come forward to you, you know yard core rastafari you know <laughs> this whole um thing, yeah this whole thing for the i i really you know, can, uh, 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 you know, associate with just being Rastafari. Tan Tanya just spoke about the lies, you know, that you end up, this thing make you into a criminal, you know? Mm -hmm. And then just thinking that even after going to a show, you could actually be stopped and carry a jail and all of them things, but still have to come up with a meditation to actually uh, yeah. heal the people through music and, that I, I mean, I and I call it sacrament. How, how important is that to the eye, will daily life and, and everything, my brother? All right. Blessed greetings to all the panelists, them. Seeing blessed to all the attendees. Yeah, it's a pleasure for there. Um, marijuana to I know, I'm going to start with I and I journey, same way as a youth, you know, as Tanya said. It was a rough journey in the early days due to, you know, it being illegal. Now, um, when I was introduced to marijuana, you know, it was recreational purposes, seeing my cousin smoke and, you know, me take a draw and a try. And I want to say the first two times me did smoke, like me did, I never really feel nothing. And me I say, yo, oh, what these people are talking about? Marijuana, this marijuana, that, and how you get addicted to this, or you know. 
So I start smoke again now and you know, I start feel the benefits and thing. Um, when my father find out some I smoke, you know, we get crazy oppression from, you know, my father. Um, you know, I was also taken to what I call drug counseling or whatever. So, you know, as a youth you now, when I start to realize, say, you know, marijuana is not, it not do nothing bad for I and I, that is when we really start look to Rastafari because, you know, Rastafari I teach about, as you mentioned earlier, the sacramental benefits, the sacramental use, you see what I say? And then now, you know, me as a DJ, same way from me in a high school. So, you know, coming into being a DJ is when I actually start for, you know, take part in a cannabis and everything. And um, as far as the creative element is concerned now, we know, say, marijuana gets you in a, in a different state of mind. You get what I mean? I say, kind of really bring it to yourself and bring out what's in you that you probably couldn't reach. You, you know, it make you access a different part of your brain where you're not going to reach if you're not whole and made. You get what I mean? I say? So... Yeah, that's that's how me really see, you know, the creative element in a marijuana and how it really enhance, you know, the, the 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 vibration for the artist, whether it's a live performance or whether the artist in a, the actual creative state, whether they create music or art for distribute. You get what I say? So it's not only entertainment as far as singing song or whatever is concerned. Holy for artists or painters use marijuana as well, you know? Yes, I, yeah, of course. So when I come forward today, we are reason, you know, in terms of the sustainability, the importance of what one should call good herb. Because, you know, a lot of times the herb, because man, up here rush it, you know, man, the way that, they, them end up put all some little things on it, you know, and is your sacrament for true and what that kind of impact now where the whole, the whole, the, the whole interaction with the herb could go right through to the government, you know, how, how the eye would actually see okay. that relationship to work, you know. So when we come forward to the eye, we want the eye just kind of focus a little bit on that area there, you know, in terms of how the relationship with, uh, of the herb would work, then, but give thanks. We'll jump forward to Sister Tanya. Um, the Sister Tanya, with just their reason with the iron at uh, 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 talk about the traveling, you know, going on tour, you know, based on how the eye say, you know, it interact with the eye and, and offer the eye so much comfort and thing. But in terms of seeing it internationally, you know, and, and I know we are not we are not trying to describe what it means to any other person. But how how do you is how how you see the impact internationally within the whole music industry and just for yourself internationally? In other words, in terms of getting it, is this something you put for your rider and it then if you are you know something you have to go get yourself? How how does it work in the international framework, um, Sister Tanya? Yeah, well, I'm not sure if anybody else put that for them rider, but I have never. Um, done so it's kind of a you see because of something was so personal and almost intimate um me not smoke with or from any and anybody you know because different people interact differently with them weed and me not really me not, just like me not eat or drink from everybody you know me not smoke from everybody either so it may develop relationships over time with people when I when feel comfortable with them, when we can trust all over. And then them we smoke stuff from. Depends on which area I'm there, how them, how the people in other area they treat cannabis, you know. If it's a if it's a fashion thing, I'm not gonna really I'm not gonna break bread with them. If it's a fad, if it's a party vibe, if, if you know, but for people where respect the plant and see it for what it is, um, whether they might use it recreationally or not, whether, whether for medicine, whether for, for feel good. Um, as long as them respect it, then 
yeah, and me and them get to know each other. And it, 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 it takes time to develop them relationship. Then. But going on tour would be a whole lot more convenient if um, we could have traveled freely with herb, you know? If we could have traveled freely and use it freely everywhere. Because um, some of the alternatives what we have on the pharmacy shelf come with more problems than we you start out to try to solve and, and where you could have simply just take two giraffes as cliff and start out. You could take something out of a bottle and end up with 16 side effects or way worse than what you start out with from morning. So it would have really convenient. It would have been better for your health um, and well-being if we could have actually moved freely with cannabis, you know? Hey, that all these processes taking place now get out of the out of the red tape um area where it's in a, and become more realistic to people actual life so that we can we can interact with the plant better and easier you know and save all the way away for trouble um so yeah we'd love to see that speed up but in comparison to like the, 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 the you know, because big festivals, whole heap of ganja smoke, Sister Tanya, how, how do I, as I said, I know you can't go in a minor people and talk, but what kind of vibration you see come from that wide use, you know, and, and, and do you think people are having that same type of interpretation? Do you see any negative vibration to it in you know, that wide audience? What are your vibration when you, when, when you look at it? No man, which part of people get a, um creatively and, and enjoy each other expression and a smoke cannabis. I never see nothing but love and peace and happiness. I don't miss it. Um the event them were yeah man, the event them were incorporate cannabis as a big part of their identity. More peaceful and family oriented even because that's a which part you're gonna see people spread a towel around and sit down with them like a picnic basket and the kids have on them, them, them earmuffs to block out the higher frequency of sound. The be small baby, them have on them thing to protect them and families gather. It's a, it, it encourage a, a, a more, to me, it encourage camaraderie, it encourage friendship and fellowship because people get around all these things. Cannabis music, the vibes, you know, the sharing of experiences through, through whatever expression, because I know the, 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 the festivals are not just music or culture, because everything represented in there, you're going to see artwork, visual artwork, you're going to see people, jewelry, houseware, thing, different expressions of creativity from different regions, because people come from all over, show for them thing and sell for them thing. Um, not only do I go to festivals to perform, but I also bring home souvenirs and I make friends. I make friends on stage, backstage, and in the audience, you know, because it's a, it's a melting pot, the environment they kind of create. Where, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that Jamaica has a branding um, thing that they could capitalize on on these international festival that, that they are going? If so, how do you think they could have go about it? Well, definitely Jamaica. Jamaica is seen as synonymous with cannabis, you know. <laughs> this is the weird thing, is that Jamaica has benefited. <laughs> Jamaica has benefited so much. This is a little hypocrisy where my wish would I get out of, because the world see we as the capital of cannabis. And it, it really double standard for come home, come fight stigma. When we don't we have a problem or benefit from all the good that comes with it. You understand? The tourists come our place. People, people romanticize about we from meeting, not just the artists, not just the, not just the public figures, but any Jamaican. People, people from other countries romanticize and, and rom romanticize Caribbean people in general. But speaking as a Jamaica, from my one Jamaican experience, Romana. what I have seen is that we, we get romanticized a lot for things where we need to start live up to them reputation. 
because people think them can just walk down the street in a Jamaica. And they've been thinking that for decades, so them can just walk down the street in a Jamaica and smoke themselves without, without fear of persecution. And that was not true. No, no, you know, so we need, we need to start live up to a reputation where the, where the world see we as and, you know, where we get romanticized from, where government benefit from. Because government have a problem with the revenue will come from the tourism we're attracted by the cannabis. So we need to start live up to that reputation now and, and, and become what we have the, the, the potential to become. Because Jamaica is a little country geographically, but it's a huge presence globally. And the things where, where the things where we represent where, 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 where we identified as, we need to start claim them. Really, not just not just talk out of the half of the top of our head and talk out of the side of our mouth, but really start, you know, start to claim them and and allow people to be themselves too. Because we don't have a problem when we when when the tour, tourism minister call out the figures of how many tourists come in. Him, him said with pride, but but not for them tourists there as some woman will come in for meet up a man where uh, she go sit down and smoke weed with and 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 relax and get away from the stress of the country where she come from. But we stigmatize the man there and we stigmatize the woman there. Yes, Yet sir. when them call out the numbers, all of them people there, all of them others, what we other and put in a little boxes and, you know, put all kind of negative things attached to them. All of those numbers quoted in the minister numbers were him proud of. So we need to stop the hypocrite. Yes, sir. We, ad- we ad- that are the biggest thing where we need, Urgel, where we need to jump now. We stop the hypocrite. Because when them say tourist dollar, them not differentiate. Ganja and them not, them, them not differentiate where the dollar, which pocket the dollar come out and them not, not which com- country it come from, nor what attract them here. Is, is that because very, the truth is the minister not attract nobody. Is and that the people, very, them and the culture. It's a very mm. important point, you know, because we, we you know, I'm a part of a, 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 a family called Rastafara Indigenous Village that hosts visitors. And yeah, when them, when them come a Rasta village, is one thing upon their mind. And we legally register. This what I say. So, I mean, yeah, there's differentiating in the figures for true. So, Sister Nikki, talk to the government. Uh, talk, talk to the government. What, 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 what you that have to say to them? Um, I mean, if, if you're talking to the government, you have to talk about money. You have to talk about uh, how everybody could make. And what I don't understand is, I mean, it hurts my heart when I see millions of dollars being burned by by the, the Ministry of National Security and stuff, even in these times, you know, it's like, I don't understand it when people are looking to export marijuana out from the Caribbean, you know, and I just don't understand the maths. I feel like most politicians didn't pass maths at CXC because it's just not adding up to me. Or you could see like a country like Canada who is now celebrating the second year as it being legal and the money that has been made. I mean, Colorado was one of the first cities in the world that went big and huge and it's legal and the, uh, the the money was amazing you know and especially what we are going through since the COVID pandemic tourism is down let's not pretend um I mean Trinidad and Tobago borders are still closed uh, but then I would see them burning 12 million dollars worth of marijuana and uh, I, for me it just makes no sense so I'm kind of hoping that um first we always have to try with the medicinal you know um, I'm really pushing for that because uh, at the end of the day there's there's a lot of, of, of science out there, a lot of facts that they could look at and see. I mean, and, and you all called some of the things earlier. Um, or, or it's helping with Alzheimer's. It's helping with cancer. It's helping with pain. They're using the oil in um, bombs to 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 help with pain and and to rub it into your skin. There's so many things we could do, and I'm just hoping that um, with the new government, I, I know we have some of the older heads, but some of the younger people in the government uh, could hopefully guide them and direct them to see how the world is changing. I mean, for us to even decriminalize it in Trinidad, oh, wow, we, we, we just got there last year. So we get in there, but wow, could we get there any slower? You know, um, 
And uh, I would, as I said before, I would love to be able to go into a doctor's office and be able to get a, a prescription that I could go in and, and purchase and, and go home and do my thing. I mean, my my husband, since they, they say we allowed four, four plants, he's been trying to grow. I have respected everybody who tries to grow plants at home. Not everybody have the green thumb. I mean, I have never, is that... My that man gave them plants so much attention because the first thing in the morning he had to bring them out and he had to put them in a certain place and then just before the, the sun going down he had to bring them all out and, and if we out and rain starts to fall we had to fly home and the, the, the love and then eventually all turned out to be female or the frustration so not everybody have the green thumb I don't want to I have to be able to hide to go and buy it for my pain you know this is a herb it's a plant um, I keep calling it a miracle plant because I've seen it work for so many people in so many different ailments and I am just hoping that the government could really see the potential the the economics behind it and see how much money the Caribbean the region could make off of this and you were so right Tanya, when you said Jamaica is seen as the ganja capital of the world, every tourist in the world wants to come to Jamaica and take a best smoke. I mean, I was one, I spent real money to come to Jamaica and just be free, you know, walk down. And the tourism was there because from the time I jump in the max, see the man asks me what you want. I mean, walking with a Rasta man to help. And everywhere I went, we were offered the best and I felt like I was really on vacation. And yes, they do market. I mean, it's marketed like that. I mean, we don't really put the ganja plant out there, but everybody knows we're going to Jamaica. It's not for the just for the jerk, you know what I mean? So we should be able as a region, not just Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, as a region, the city region, as, as everything that goes with it, the easy flowing, the calm, laid back, the great music. I mean, when you put just Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago together, just in terms of music, blow mind, the festival, sell the whole package. Let's let's stir the economy, get tourism going. Yes, they come in Jamaica for we the best. Let's sell the crap out of it and move on. Uh, that's what I would tell the government. Go to another Jamaica. Sister Nikki, mm -hmm. just, 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 just paint us a little picture of what is involved in the decriminalization there for, for us now. What are you allowed in Trinidad? Four plants. Let's start there. Or 30 grams. You know, sometimes so I see asking myself, who do do these maths? So if one plant giving me 30 grams, well, that's it. I can't do any other plant. And uh, is it that I could have 30 grams while some other's burden in the back? I don't know. I'm confused. It shouldn't be so difficult to work out just to smoke a, a little something for the pain or whatever reason. I can't believe in 2021 that we're still trying to... to um, break the stigmatization, stigmatization with, with marijuana, you know? Um, and as you, someone said earlier when we were discussing before we went live, you know, it came down from the grandparents and, and you know, I, when I first introduced my Rasta fairy and husband to my family, they, you know, wow, I've gone back, I'm, I'm, I'm going, going back in time. And, you know, it took a long while for my grandparents and for my family and them to accept here. Yeah. And I remember my husband having a conversation with my grandfather talking about, yes, he's a smoker. And, you know, and my grandfather had this image of what somebody who smokes weed is, you know, lazy, um, the usual, the usual, no good, etc. So I think we have to... We have to change the mentality. It's sad sometimes when I look at, um, you know, even Jamaica, you know, whereas we see it is the capital that the fight down is there. We expect you guys to be like leaders and for us to say, you see Jamaica doing it, what's the problem? So we are just hoping uh, your lead and we can follow. <laughs> Straight into the I know yard core, you know, because... Yes. Um, yard core, the, the thing starting at Jamaica for true, like what Nikki said. That's and we right. just want to know if you think it's a get deal with right. You know, it, all the people them who suffer for it, them people, how do I see it from the angle? All right. Well, first of all, why marijuana is the, you know, our Jamaica is the marijuana capital of the world is because of the reggae music scene. All of the reggae artists back in the days were, and even now, seen were big advocates 
for marijuana. You see what I say? And, um, you know, it's been illegal from them time there till, you know, just the other day. I'm not sure what exact date them decriminalize it, but where we see it come from and where they know, we have to give thanks. And all we have to do is kind of, you know, set the other implementations them where, where we need and, and go forward, you see me? Because, I mean, me remember the days when if me a drive on the road as me see a police so me a, me a, me a, me a disappear me split you see me I know me can all ask me there beside all police I, I burn my herb and you get what me I say so we, we give thanks same way even though we know way more you understand based on you know the entertainment aspect the economical aspect you understand what I say? So, yeah, we just have to go and advocate for the herbs and, 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 and make them make the necessary changes going forward. You there? Wait, I mean, you like You're mute. Come yeah, on. So, in terms of like the whole journey of, of equity. You know, Rastafari, the credits, where it should go, the small farmers, all that. Yeah, well, as me said, the reason marijuana or marijuana or Jamaica is the capital for marijuana is because of, you know, the reggae music, Rastafarian culture. And, you know, it's obvious and should not even be, you know, said, but we should be getting the first benefits of this marijuana plant, we say. Holy Parasta man a farmer, seeing we know Nikki talk about the holy for millions of dollars were attached to marijuana that can set the economy and our you know system on a better level. You understand what I say? Device um the poverty level and all of them things. So you know, as far as Rasta is concerned, we should be getting the first rights. I mean, like, eh? Yard core, what I did a check, Dalpan, do you think there's mm -hmm. something that the small farmers and the community of Rastafari should do? Like, if you have an advice to give them, how, how do I would answer the reasoning that I forgot? Yeah, well, naturally, I got so the get... Yeah, well, as naturally, I got to address the government in, you know, all the atrocities that the Rastafarian people have been through. As far as fa small farmers know, you know, there can be unions set up to kind of bring the people together, bring the economy together where, where, where the farmers are concerned, where Rastas are concerned. Whole heap of other entertainment factors, as we know, Naya Bingi keep seeing, and we know, say, people flying from all over the world to attend Naya Bingi. You get what I say? So it's, you know, without question for say, you know, I and I should be, you know, coming together as small farmers, marijuana farmers, likewise Rastafarians. And I make the government know, say, you know, we is together and, you know, we want some better benefits as far as marijuana is concerned. We want to be able to export the plant, you get what I said, just like how they might export onion and garlic and yam and banana and all of them things there. You see what I say? Mute again? Yeah, fish man, you're mute. You're tired. Yeah. Um, There, there. Yeah, man, I there. The connection I play around a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. but why would I just I break up? Break it out. Oh. First man, we can't hear you.
All right. Well, let me just ask, let me just follow up on that, Tanya, and, and ask you, you know, from your perspective or what ideas do you have, and the same thing to you, Nikki, to get more of the grassroots community involved in the industry? Because as much as it is important that, you know, when we talk about medicine, you know, medicine has a certain standard. It goes into a bottle and it has to have all the things around it to make a consumer feel like it's safe and properly, you know, produced and so forth. But there's a huge supply chain there that gives opportunity. So I would love to hear what ideas you have until First Bank comes back as far as how we can get more, quote unquote, you know, I don't like to say that, the, you know, that the little people or whatever, I think that's, that's somewhat disparaging, but how do we get smaller, in, you know, oper operators, entrepreneurs involved in the industry so that they can also see the upside in, 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 as we go legal? Well, um, the licenses are expensive as I've seen them. Um, the, the smaller farmers can't afford it. So that would be the first step to lower the fees. Um, there, it, it's so regulated, you know, and it, it, I find it annoying because first of all, the people who used to be criminalized for planting, for, for selling, for using cannabis have pretty much been sidelined when, 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 it, when the discussion moved towards making it legal and, and decriminalizing it. Um, the smallest people involved in the trade, in the use, kind of got sidelined. And, and there are many people with, with um, criminal records coming from cannabis that I think should automatically be expunged, expunged along with the decriminalizing and legalizing process, whatever whatever charges people had stemming from cannabis should be, it should be taken from their records. Um, and they should be allowed. And can you imagine you having gone to prison for, for ganja and then ganja becomes legal and you can't get a license because you have a prison record, but the record comes from ganja. Um, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Stuff like that need to be addressed. And then again, the fees and, and regulations so that people can, it is, I, I find it distasteful that the people who used to frown at me when I, when I smoke, when they would smell ganja on me, people who used to turn up their noses at me are now the ones first in line to benefit commercially from legalization. I am disgusted. I am nauseated. I feel like the, 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 the Rastafarians and the, the little man who used to sell weed should be first in line. They should be first in line, but and and I don't think, um, I don't think for my personal use I need cannabis to be to to meet all the specifications of pharmaceutical drugs because cannabis is natural. There's nothing being done. I I take straight from the plant to my consumption. Um, I can understand the need for all of the regulations surrounding the the, the um. The, the stuff that's derived, but cannabis is a, a plant coming straight from the earth to me. I, I don't need it to be anything to be done to convince me of the safety of it. You know, I, I can't speak for everybody, but from my perspective, I don't, I don't need anything else to be done, but it to be made available for me to be allowed to use it. That comes from government. So Sister Tanya, Sister Tanya, this conversation that they're having so boy, the man hung up the weed in a one little hut and, you know, the, the, the fox said, you know, some people, are, everybody are talking about the cleaner environment of growing it and how important you think those conversations, those conversations is what them use, infrastructure costs and them things that actually lock out the small man. But how important you really think that is though? I don't think it's important at all because the small man didn't manage the industry before them get involved. And it did fine. There wasn't a problem. Um, well, well, I just want to jump in here um, too, because I think this is basically the same thing in Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we're going to see where the, the once it starts to um, get to the point where you can have licensed land and you can grow, et cetera, it's going to be the big business. And, and sadly, it was the little man because under the law, um, 
yes, you can have uh, four plants or you can have the, the 30 grams, you know. But if I don't, if I'm not going up myself, where do I get the 30 grams from? That's illegal. If I go and they find me buying the 30 grams from somebody who has more than 30 grams, then it becomes illegal. So um, I totally agree with what Tanya says. It's, it, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the small man who's been doing the hustle for years and years and years, and they're the ones facing all the charges etc uh, but now that they're looking to open up the market um and it, I, I think you know at the end of the day is about the government and what they put into place and they can do this and put these things into place if they want they can encourage um young farmers etc to make it cool to be this is a cool business to be into and they could farm and and be able to, to sustain themselves in the industry etc and I'm well, hoping that when they fine tune it in Trinidad and Tobago, that as Tanya said, the small man who's been there, you know, getting all the pressure for the longest while should be the first in line. But realistically, that's not how the world works. That's not how Trinidad and Tobago works. Uh, it's going to be the big business in front. In front. What, what yeah, I feel yeah. still, what I feel still seeing as far as the pharmaceutical aspect of marijuana is concerned. Um, there needs to be um, regulation for sure. Just like how if a man are going to make juice, yeah, yeah. they need to have to pass the Bureau of Standards. A man can just come make juice and just distribute it. So without seeing. So as there, there should be two markets. If a man want to plant him herb and hang it up in a, day, a film business that, but we just know say him can't reach the pharmaceutical standards based on how he might do him thing. But you still have to allow him same way for doing thing, export free or whatever the case may be. You understand what I said, but when you talk about putting a package on them thing there, you have to meet a certain standard. And, and everybody plant weed clean. You understand? And everybody plant weed with the same standard, the same level, the same care, the same love. So that are my input as far as pharmaceutical herb is concerned, you don't know, you just love the black market, make him do him things the same way, you sustain him family. You see what I say? But if you want to meet the standards of pharmaceutical, then you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to do your thing. If you want a car, you can't go, what cost a million dollars, you can't go at the car mart with 500,000. You understand? You have to meet the standards. All so, right, just quickly. To the participants, any questions that you have, you can put it in the in the in the, in the Q and A room. But Yardcore, how much herb you really think say a one should and it have like a creative mind like that? Yeah. How much herb you really? Think? You see, call them say five plant and two ounce. So, how do I see that? Right. Own, well, yeah. for me, Muda say no limit, no for dead. You understand what I mean? <laughs> No, that's it. No limit, no for dead. A herb, a plant, where the most I plant, any amount where you desire to have, I, I saw it for go. I'm mean, not even going to put no limit on it. So these are the things where me would address to the government as far as you know certain things where we're not happy with, even though we give thanks for the, the leniency, what them are bring same way. Yeah, but can I say something real quick? Um, regarding the meeting of standards, I understand for the for the purpose of export, for the purpose of if you if you're going to be in the pharmacy for a doctor for prescribe, then I understand the necessity for meet a standard then. But mm. if a man plant him herb and I go hang it in the market and me go in and buy a bud, I don't need a standard for that. Mm. All right, so that may I say. It shouldn't be mandatory. Or the limit go to the eye. Yeah. Or the limit part go to the eye. Me? Yeah, how the limit thing go. What's your me limit? Me, me, me agree with you, hardcore. Me don't feel no limit should I do that. I mean, me, me, me don't have no limit for my, for my life, for my mind, and my creativity. So I can't think of a reason why. It's not like it have no negative side effects. So why I should I have a limit? My limit set by me.
Shit. Them not limit the tomato, them and the garlic, them where you are by. <laughs> and I want to tell you, say, you, you know, them for limit garlic because it's a blood thinner. It's a thing. I see that. And if you are going to do surgery, enough people don't even know if you have surgery or come up, you're not supposed to consume too much garlic because your blood not going to clot. So, garlic probably have worse side effects than cannabis. See it there. <laughs> see it there. There, there, achievement, there is one person on the line just asking about goals and achievement. Goals and achievement. What do, do you think we have achieved anything? And you know what would be the goal? Well, we definitely achieve something because as me say, when me I drive down the road, no police can come stop me and harass me for my spliff. That like you don't know what that do for I and I, the relaxation what that bring. Like, I couldn't believe when we just start to police less on the road. You can't tell, say, all right, the government say, even before the official decriminalization, you see, say, the government sent out an order to the police, them say, stop harassing people them for this kind of, you see me, so you know, say, the man, them are tech programming. Which them always say, yo, I just my work, me I do, I just my work, me I do. Seeing so we would definitely come a far away, seeing we have dispensaries now in Jamaica. Seeing me just do a strain review, you know, talking about herbs and whatever for a dispensary in Jamaica. That is unheard of. Back in the day. You get to me, I say. So as me say, all we have to do now, I just address certain little things where we're not hundred with, for instance, the limitation upon the herbs, as Tanya mentioned, a big thing, people who get criminalized or have criminal record for marijuana and, and, and can't even get a license or them can't get a visa or, you know, all of them things there. I just, them things that me want to see change up, you know. About the ISIS, Nikki. Yeah. You think we have achieved anything in terms of on what you think our goal should be? Uh, yeah, Sam, um, in terms of Trinidad and Tobago, you know, um, just the fact that now we can we can have this in our homes and you don't have to feel like a criminal. Um, you know, I, I always hated that feeling when, um, you know, it was time to get and it's time for me to take a smoke to ease my pain and knowing that it is 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 um, a criminal act and just that feeling um, is, is a great step, I think, for Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I, I think we have a long, long way to go. I mean, you hear more dispensaries in Jamaica. It's like, well, you're real posh boy because we didn't reach that level yet. <laughs> um, we could just have four plants, you know, and um, I think, you know, we, we have a lot more to go. And as I said, you know, too many, um, I, I'm, I'm really involved with, with cancer patients because, you know, I lost a lot of family members with due to cancer and um, I know it works. And, you know, why are we sticking? I really would like us to get more proactive and, and shows like this, uh, webinars like this, you know, educate people and open their minds a little uh, for Caribbean people. Sometimes we can very, be very close-minded and um, I, I just want really things like this and, and proactive things like this to get the message across of how great the benefits are and how people and countries can benefit from it. Uh, and how people and countries Yeah, um... Yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. Sister Nikki, can you comment anything on what is going on in Antigua? That that model looks a little bit different from Jamaica. It sounds like the government have a partnership with the Rastafari community. How do you see that model? Have you ever looked into it before? Um, no, I mean, I, I see Antigua, you know, on radio, we always talk about the kind of direction that Antigua goes. And, and that's the, the direction that, firstly, Jamaica should be there um, in terms of the Rastafarian movement and, and the cannabis, because many times it's, 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 it goes hand in hand. And you have to have the communication with the 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 Rastafarian community to better understand their needs uh, um, and, and understand it and not just see it as the people that st still see it as a, a, a what would they say, a, a lead way into harder drugs. Know. 
Right. And um, that's the kind of conversations we have to have. So kudos to Antigua if, if they are at that point. I mean, that means that the government really understands their culture and, and, and their people and what their people want. I mean, I, you know, it's so funny that you know, again, we, we're in 2021 discussing cannabis, especially in our region, you know, but uh, I've gone, I've traveled all, uh, all over the world under, under the umbrella of entertainment. And I have seen almost every culture participate in, in, in cannabis and everyone has the same ideas. And, and um, someone had said before, I think it was Tanya talking about the, 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 the bond that is shared, and we've seen that so many times. I mean, we can't share as much as we used to with COVID, uh -huh. but you know, the, the 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 love and the the respect for for the marijuana and what it does with different communities, and and I just think as as um, we have said, it's so much hypocrisy, so much hypocrisy, and I think we need to stop the hypocrisy. If COVID has taught us one thing is live your truth, live your life, because uh, all are we going on there just now? So you know what I mean? It's dragging out, dragging out, dragging out. We need to really sit down and, and have these um, talks and, and start talking more. So kudos to Antigua. Kudos to Antigua's government. Yeah, so, I mean, the ultimate goal here, though, I mean, you know, I what you, you, sister tanya when i think about that 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 hypocrisy that that we are talking about and then the jamaican government giving this whole idea that they have to navigate this because they are treaties and you know it can cross certain borders and so on sister tanya how do you see um them to approach that type of vibe because jamaica feel like them is a small fish in the thing and big countries or shut them down like the United States. I think there's even still some drug eradication thing. Everybody afraid of international narcotics board. How do you think Jamaica could then do that and own it at the same time? Well, to be honest with you, I, I think we need the we need a tenacity of people like me and Motley from Barbados who is not afraid to address the problems that face us because when she stand up in front of the United Nations and talk about the, the, the sanction like um, impositions on us economically, certain, fa certain facilities where, where Caribbean people can't access. When she talk about them things, she no flinch. It's going to take that kind of attitude from our people that we elect to govern our business for stop being the little boy and girl of the Caribbean. And stand up and big big man. We we we're small countries, but we are players in this game, and we have to actually, um, we have to speak from our perspective and stop waiting for directives from other people. And me know, I'm me, me not naive, so me understand the, some of the things that we are trying to achieve tied in with other things where we are big help with. I mean, me, me get that, me get politics, but at the same time, if you're you're going to get a lot of what you're willing to take. You have to at some point stand up and make the, 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 the playground bully know say, hey, this need for up. And all we run. And we, we would do it much easier if the Caribbean was actually the united. United, right. If the Caribbean, and this is what me and Matt been a try for do. Um, me don't me, me want to seem like me, me, me a fan girl, Matley, but me really rate Matley because she stand up and she want the, the, the region to unite so we can present us stronger voice to outside elements where in between. And this is where Caribbean need to understand we, we can't compete against each other. We're too small to win a world war. You understand? And, and granted, me not about arms and weaponry and killing people, but this way I go on, the economic warfare, the social warfare, we can't compete in it individually. We need to for, for team up and start work together, but we do it on an individual basis. Yard core, don't we have we work, we, 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 we unite and we work with people right throughout the region. We have sure. friends and family. We get we manage it. So why we, why the people and we employ for look after our business can manage it? If we already on the ground and manage it. We need yeah, the team and the government, they need fair work together. We need fair work together so that we can present one stronger united regional voice. They say, yo, you hear me? Lift for no economic sanctions. We have some silent economic sanctions against the region. See, simple little things where people can't access and them, them claims are because of uh, uh, because of criminal activity. Where they everywhere. 
we don't have them more than nowhere else. So there's no real reason for we to forget the blocks what we have against we. So if we can join forces so that we have a stronger voice, we government them need to start work together and we need to insist that them do because I, I our employee them. Yeah. All right. So please remember all participants. We have the, the we have the Q and A um, area. Any questions you'd love to ask, we we're, we're paying attention to that now. So the yeah, item can just drop your questions in there. But as we move through um the whole vibration, you know, it, it, almost everyone I hear them don't go to the recreational vibes. You know, everyone use it personally with themselves in a particular way. Tanya really mentioned and say, boy, anywhere cannabis family gather is normally peace and iriness, you know? So in, in, in terms of that kind of vibration, yard core, yeah. how, how, how do I really say, you know, the, the whole layout of it from this whole sacramental component? Because the law in a Jamaica gave this, this segment, which is sacramental, which means that Rastafari could have a place of worship, Rastafari could have cultivation rights, a Rastafari could have um exempt event. Did, did they um well, over over a period of time? It don't it don't feel like it's a partnership. I'm you know speaking for one who's directly involved in those type of conversation. It don't feel like it's a partnership between as you know Tanya was just speaking about partnership that must exist between the government and governments. But in terms of government and the, and a small farmer relationship, that a Rastafari relationship there, how, 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 how the structure of that could and it work? All right, well, we don't mention from earlier, say, as far as entertainment is concerned, you know, we have the Naya Bingi scene, and it is not entertainment for I and I attract people from all over the world. You see me if you say we are partake in a, this marijuana thing as a sacrament and not just you know smoking forget high or whatever as well as the, the cultural Rastafari vibration seeing so you know tourist attractions can definitely be set up with the government and the small farmer them you know people want to come tour the farm them same way you understand as far as you know the unification that marijuana brings to people all across the world now is because you know we know the oppression where marijuana go through all the way i feel the same kind of emotion towards this plant as far as you know the oppression is concerned so that's why when you keep all a marijuana festival or naya bingi or whatever you see the unification vibration and the the peace vibration. Shall if I'm on a call, please? <laughs> Sorry about that. Come a man, man. I said, you know, come on. You know? <laughs> well, anyway, so, um, you know, we see the unification of the marijuana bring. So the government for done unite with the Rasta man, as we've been, I say. You see me? And, um, yeah, the entertainment factor. So, so oh. what about your work? Yeah. Yeah, what, what I really want to ask there, yeah, let me just put it direct and straight yeah, because yeah. the small farmers them figure to themselves that they don't have the voice and the rest of our community might figure to themselves that they don't have the voice like the reggae fraternity, right? Mm -hmm. So th that's the question I'm asking. Can there be, because this thing contributes so much to that particular industry, do you of think course. a strong voice could come out of a collaborative effort from all of, of the reggae practitioners, musician practitioners, and so on. You think, you think that, course, that could be a kind of, of approach? 100%, man, because you see, unity is in strength, and unity is in numbers. Strength is in numbers. You understand what I mean? I say, so the more the government say, more people have come together, people of you know, with, with a so-called call power. You understand? Because that is why you know, the Rasta man or the small farmer would have feel like them don't have a voice because they don't have the power. So, you know, we just need somebody with the right leadership qualities who is in place with power, 
you know, in the reggae fraternity to organize and send out the word. And, you know, then everything will, will come forward. But I don't see, I don't see anyone really has shown the vibe once is a serious movement and not just, um, you know, something self-beneficial to a one person or if there's a big plan and, you know, we are, we are see the right vision and, you know, put the right people in place to manifest this, then it can happen. And yeah. But, uh, but we can't, you see, we as people, sometimes we even move like the government as well. You know, different organizations will function as a government and not be unified with even within themselves. You understand what I say? So that is where the problem really lies. You get what I say? We need unification for your cause and not for a one self. You understand what I say? So, so, so what I hear in, it sounds as if this, the, the, the people themselves need to be organized. And without that organization, that is why the government have that breathing space. It, 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 it brings something to mind, Anna. It brings something to mind. I remember the other day in the Coptic country conversation. And, you know, we the on the ground, a lobby fire. We go all the way up in a, 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 a Coptic country, drums, all type of thing. Man, mm. and then the next thing I know, though, um, bounty killer was here before get an audience with the um with the prime minister and mm. and get some and get some clarity too. I mean, we never hear much about what the clarity was, but what it showed me was this strength of the, of, of, of these creative and cultural people that it looked like when them talk, government here. So if we are have these issues and it's so important to that creative industry, oh, that first step could and it make though. I mean, is there like a fraternity, a togetherness there where these issues could be brought? I re, it's a genuine question because I really don't know if there is an association of reggae artists or whatever be the case. But mm -hmm. or, or if we could and do the same thing, which is said, boy, all right, a conversation and one person really go as a kind of spokesman. Because, you know, we know that sometimes organizations are easy to start, but difficult for, to maintain. But I think yeah. so from an integrity standpoint, I think from an integrity standpoint, and because it plays such a great role to reggae music, we don't, we don't know if beyond the facts are right, a song, if we could make a policy approach, you know, and oh, where you think that could start, Sister Tanya, and I love the IFA weighing upon this one as well. Yeah, me, me I try, me, me try and see if we can process cause. But um <laughs> <laughs> firstly, let me say me understand it's not that it's not that government more willing to listen to artists. That's another case. Um an artist we get uh we will we, we'll get uh, uh, access to the leader. Because the artists command one big audience. So the, the, the response what we get is not based on say yeah, a politician no. actually want to talk to we, but them but because we can speak to the entire population at once because we have a platform, the visibility, we actually command a lot of attention and can be disruptive or distracting if we so choose. So this is why then we address we quicker. And not because we get no more respect or not like that. This, this, this are just human survival instincts from a point of view. You have the pulse of the people, vibration in your, yeah. in, your, in your delivery. Yeah, and we understand disruption as a tool and we use it. So this is why we will get audience with people quicker. Because problems we may have with various organizations I may call them, 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 may I do the regular channel calling and try to solve it. And nobody not pay me no mind. I may go up on my Instagram and start post, put two colorful fabric in it, and two tools them are searching the whole place to try to find me to resolve the issue. I don't want to use that channel there, but it works. And this is a wish part. This is the corner where we paint ourselves in and the paint very wet and it not dry. So I guess we stuck for a while. So what I say is, um, I saw that somebody was commenting, Miss Jennifer Ogle. Um, uh, saying she reached out and tried to talk to people and not getting no response. So me, me, from my perspective, me can tell you right now, 
I don't recognize the name and I don't social. I really, me almost anti-social. So if, if a strange person when I don't reach out to me, the likelihood of me responding is slim to none. That's the truth. So if, if Yardcore, I'm familiar with Yardcore. If Yardcore spearheaded the initiative, I will run in because I know him, I know what I know what he mean, I know what it means to him, even though we're not friends personally. You understand what I say? It, yeah. it, if somebody from out of the blue where I never hear of before coming and see, because there are so many people where I do things for so many different reasons when yeah. I'm aligned with my purpose. So don't take it personal when you don't get response from the artist. Them, them are people to member no, but not obligated to answer. So if you start, I reach out to people I know, talk to them, no follow through. Don't take it personal. Yeah, that's the first thing you have to do. Stop taking things personal because it's really not about you. They might go about them life. You don't know, maybe right now they might try to figure out how they might pay them bills because Corona locked down our industry entirely for the whole year. So, take it from a different perspective. You talk to some people now where your sister engaged in the process, start with them. Instead of you, I go try to convince somebody else to go make your mission their mission. Start with who already share your mission. You know, that to me is a more practical um, point Perfect. to start from. And... Yeah, I mean, think, I think so. This is something more personal to your course. I mean, I look forward to working alongside him. Um, yeah, in this. you know, as we say, we just need somebody who, sorry for cut you, um, who really serious about the thing, and and you will see people rallying one, 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 one. You understand? Yeah. Because everybody want to be a part of something that is serious and that is yeah. beneficial to something that them. Involved, you know, exactly. You understand? So, you know, well, yeah. just what? a little sharing here, though, is actually a very lucrative, it's a lucrative strategy, right? As what Tanya was just mentioning, it's a very lucrative, especially indigenous communities and so on, who can't really afford to go to legal thing. The only thing government is left to be done is embarrassed. You know, embarrassed by, you know, these international voices. You know, for, for example, when Rastafari was going through that world, Carl Garden incident type of thing, you know, and, you know, one lawyer came here and said, you may not have the money to fight the case, but what you definitely could do when some of these big artists are connected us, ask them to make a statement about it that will put the Jamaican government in public disgrace. And that is some of the things that government resp re respond to while business deal with branding, governments deal with standing, how, how them look, how them protect them citizens and so on. Um, is that make them attractive, you know? So I really think for true that the cannabis community is tourism. And most of the people that move we could look into that approach and see, you know, the best way. As Tanya said, so we have to find who we can work with. But it would have been very, I think it's an important conversation to how much it really contributes to the reggae industry, you know? So Sister Nikki is, is, is a carnival. Your mic mute. What you said about carnival? Mr. Nikki, you there? Yeah, yeah. It's ganja and carnival. Oh, oh yeah, G G ganja is in carnival. It's um, it's it's you know you, you can always tell the price goes up, you know, <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> when there's an influx of visitors, etc. And uh, um, it gets a little more scarce, um. But yeah, and this is why I'm saying that the whole Caribbean should be selling this along with all their festivals. Because every island has a carnival, they crop over, Jamaica carnival, Jamaica reggae festivals. So, and everybody, you know, the jazz festival, it should be 
as part of the tourism as we uh, look past COVID, you know? Let's be real, let's see what's working and, and it's something that definitely could be um, increase our assets in terms of coming to you. So much more you could offer now. So yeah, I'm one that thinks soon as we start about carnival, everyone should be, you know, kind of, that's what we should be selling. It's a marketing tool and it can work for everybody. That's kind of how I see it. Yes. Uh, um, in, in, you know, we are looking at this marketing and, and you know, you, uh, you have that recommendal aspect, you know, uh, and, and, and I think the representation of the plant is going through many, 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 many different versions, you know. Uh, you look at some of these big festivals and, and, and there's just so many dubs and, and all different types of approach of consumption. Yeah. You know, the, 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 I, the I survey any of those approach of consumption, yard, co yard core, and do you find any of them, you know, better than the traditional smoking or, or, or you advise on this Yo, consumption no, I journey? I, and yesterday, me, um, did I talk to my sister in about the dabbing thing, you know, and my dab still, but it's not something what me really do because, me don't know, when you dab and you dab, like, it lick your your chest bone. You see, me, as a man, it's not even your lungs, you know, my lad. Me, I talk about your chest bone plate. Me, yesterday, me, I made you, me, I wonder what in it, what would I make you lick your bone? Because the chalice may have bun while me have made it. You see me, because me have offered the chalice and I ask her if she ever bun it yet. And she has said, no, but she dab. And me I say, yo, the dab way more dangerous. You see me? So, me is a man at the bun chalice. Me they are use, the word where they are used a while ago is... Eh? They are... They are... The word that I use a while ago is dangerous. I mean, no, I mean, I'm just like picture the eye for a dab ad. Which? Which one? Picture the eye for a dab ad. I mean, no, if if it dab ads, they would have told us. I agree with that. With that, so they're still. But, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there any other form of consumption that I ever try in this new technological approach? Eat pen yeah, and so all I these things. That's... Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, for it. Got you. Yeah. Um them have the thing when named the, the volcano now, which is a vaporizer. But it vaporized before, which is like the same thing as a steam chalice, but the electric electric. Wow, electric electrical farm, electrical farm. Anyway, um, you know, we don't really like to eat marijuana still. So, but you don't know we tried that before. And um which other way? We use it as rub same way, you know, for pain and them thing there. Um yeah, I really, that's still, you know, tea. We don't really drink the tea, but we don't know we do it before the same way. The thing is, when you when you consume it, you know, when you ingest it, it gives you a different high than when you smoke it or, or um, steam it, you know? So I kind of prefer the, the, the smoking vibes. How about, yeah, is this Latanya? Same for me, no? I prefer for smoke. Um, although, like me tell you, me grew up on the the leaf them were cured in a rum. I drink that cock full of that for medicine. And then in a modern times now, me try the pen, the, the vape. Uh, me not really, you know, me not really somebody were too keen pan. Me kind of, me kind of do the things that me use so me know work. So me, me smoke, me stick with the smoking of the regular bud. Me, me, me just dip on the flowers. I'm not really into the, the um any of the other methods. But I'm not knocking them still not, just my personal preference. I prefer the smoke as big. What about the eye, sister Nikki? Um well for me personally, um 
I, I smoke it. As I said, I use it a lot for pain. So that for me is the best. It helps relax me and 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 the muscles and so that cause the pain. Um, and also the rub, you know, um, using it on my uncle, it really worked. Um, and I've also drank the tea. Yeah, you know, it's supposed to be a, a good, you know, cleansing and stuff. So um, there's so many ways that, that you could use it. I've tried the edibles. I mean, I was in Europe last year and I tried it for the first time, but um, it really had like no effect on me whatsoever. I think it's a rip off, but <laughs> I'm starting to think it's high dosage. Flowers. <laughs> that you're high dosage. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> Only years of pain and using it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, all right. I mean, we are coming closer to the time. Um, you know, I, I want that we are again. So, Sister Tanya, if you could just give us a look around in terms of the whole vibration and everything. And, you know, we'll just go through with Nikki afterwards, Yardcore. You know, just do your final song, you know? Yeah. Well, this, this discussion that we have, I we'll find it very encouraging because we're basically all up on the same page. Um, and I am very grateful for how far we come because I don't really like the idea of living my life like a criminal for someone I know it's not a criminal offense. Um, I'm happy for how far we reach, I want to encourage with heads of state um, all over the Caribbean to move a little faster, put a little pep in them step. You know, even if we can't speed up how we interact with other nations outside our region, but at least speed up what we do to each other inside of the region. Um, you know, and then we need a, re a mass resocialization um, drive as far as how we, we, we interact with each other in terms of the stigma we've been put upon cannabis over the years and getting rid of it. Because people, some people still are skin up them nose, like you're still a dirty rasta and you're still a smoky dirty ganja, and, you know? We yeah, still man. need to get rid of that. So, but we, we come a far way. Someone come in with me. No one just sit down and cuss, cuss, cuss. We come a far way. We feel clap ourselves for that. But we still have more for go and we need to speed up. Um, yes. From my perspective, yeah, totally agree with Tanya. Yeah, we, we need to be moving faster than this. You know, it's like uh, all of them smoke and get some real good stuff and just go back in the bed and sleep. Hello, we need you <laughs> to move on this. And, um, you know, I, I keep saying as a, as third world country, the first world country is not that they do everything correct, but there are many of their procedures and things that we can follow. The, the work has been done already. How can we make money from this? How can we better uh, cure patients with this? A lot of the medicine and, and, and a lot of the scientific facts are out there. And um, it would be awesome if we moved as a, as a, a united community the Caribbean, you know? We can do other things but play cricket, you know what I mean? And this would be like a great <laughs> forum for all of us to kind of move as one. And because uh, I think we all have the yeah. same goals. Yes, yeah, cool. Uh, well, I mean, the music, everything. Uh, you, you think so we must, when, when, when we are reading ganja and we are saying reggae is about the clothes, is about the colors and thing, you think we should have write it down and say, boy, reggae is about ganja. And I mean, just close your statement, never I know you actually. <laughs> yeah, reggae is definitely about ganja for sure, or a part of reggae, because me say from back in the days when the oppression of Guan is reggae artists who is Rastafarian that advocate for the herbs and that make people know worldwide the powers of the herb and the connection of the herb to Rastafari and your spiritual growth scene. Now, my message would I want to send to all of the parents seeing who have youths where I try to experiment with marijuana is don't alienate them, but nurture them the same way. You understand? Because when you alienate them now, you might see the result that you don't want to see. You understand? So... Yeah, we don't see marijuana as a positive herb and you get what me I say, we want to see all the stigma that is attached, the negative stigma that is attached to the herb. You know, that I gotta take a time because you don't know some people don't stuck in them ways already. 
but we are focused on the youth them. So that's why I say, you know, as parents, me know, me know, uh, see, you know, parents that alienate them youth because me go through that. You see me and see my father and mother. I love me up now, same way more than ever. You understand? So it's time my energy wasted. You see me? Yes, I. Yes, I. We yes, really I. want to give thanks to the items still, you know. I mean, or taking your time out, but I tell you, I'm a grudge guy still. You look so relaxed. Like, you know, do nothing. <laughs> Wait, no. Sorry I, for I, you. All right. I think you know, we kind of depend on the vibes and things, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's as natural as that. You know, honestly, um, we, we, we really like all of the items advocate for. We have to stand firm in this vibration. We really and truly. I see some, 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 some foreigner people, you know, mainly white people. And them actually trod with them youth. And when them come here, them say to us, them come with the youth. For the youth, know about ganja. Them not alienate them like what the brethren did I say, you know. And them come yeah. to hear from the source. And them actually tour them youth around the world. Exposing them to, do you really want to be a part of this? So we see that education is very, very important. We really want to give thanks to the music fraternity. The item really saved the day in so many ways. So love to the item creatives. Rastafari. I want to tell you, say, yeah. the marijuana thing come a far away because all my auntie seen who is a Christian. A Sunday gone, my bill a spliff here. Hey, talk <laughs> them something. You understand <laughs> what I <laughs> say? I like yeah, that. Uh, uh, suppose, you pa suppose you passed on the panel webinar, brethren. Suppose <laughs> you passed on the panel webinar. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you, man. I'm going to show you, you say, the stigma is kind of becoming a little bit better still. So, <laughs> I have to give thanks. I never would have dreamed to see that day. day. <laughs> <laughs> Dreams do Thank come you, true. Thank <laughs> you, Love you, Adam. I'm more loving than the blessing. Yeah, my Rastafari. Yes, you can exceed. Yes, can exceed. Bless, bless the eye. Bless Douglas. Bless the Kenneth family. Keep that.